Hi everyone, welcome, John here. Today's video I'm going to show you how we can use pandas to directly get data from a URL into a data frame. No requests, no beautiful soup, no loops, no scraping, directly from the URL into pandas. Okay, so the, the thing we need to do first is we need to import pandas. So we'll do import pandas as pd. Now the if you've done some of my web scraping before, you'll see that quite often I will use the data frame to CSV uh, or read CSV. So reading brings the information in. Now pandas actually has a function called read HTML that we can give a URL that will go out to that page and it will scrape it directly for us. So it would look like this. So we'll just say df for data frame is equal to pd dot read HTML. There it is right there. And now we just need to give it a URL. So there's a few caveats to this. The first one is that uh, it does use beautiful soup, but sometimes it uses other parsers, that's fine. And what it will do is it will go out and it will look for table data on that web page. So what do I mean by table data? I mean the actual HTML tags table and the other ones TR and TD. So it's going to go out and it's going to look for these on the page and it's going to return a list. So it's going to return a list of however many tables it finds. If you use this, it works well on some, some websites, not so well on others. You may need to do some data cleaning once you've got it. But for some websites, like I'm going to show you now, it's really quick, really easy, and could be really useful to some people just getting the data straight out. Okay, so let's have a look at some demo sites that I've, I've picked up. This one is a Fastest Laps website. It basically has a table of data for a vehicle, a driver, and a lap time for this specific Le Mans Bugatti circuit. So if I copy this URL and go back to our code, put it in here, and then just do uh, print df and we'll run that we should get back a data frame there so what it's done is it's gone out and it's returned a list of all of the tables it has found on that page for us um, so if we look at the first one is exactly the data that we were after and the second one is something else so that means there must be another table on that page so if we look at it the first one we got was all of this and the second one I think is underneath somewhere uh, it'll be this this looks like a table or something else. So basically, all we need to do is index it. So zero being the first one, run that again. And there's our data frame, we can see it's 178 lines, 177 lines, all the information in it, we've got the titles, uh, sorry, the column headers, the whole lot in basically one line of code. And this is really cool and could be really useful. Um, from there, we could manipulate this data in any way, etc, etc. Another really good website that this works for is Wikipedia. Wikipedia is basically one big table and we can scrape so much information from it. So again, if I come to a Wikipedia page, we've got a records for the land speed record. And it's got this table here that's got all of the data on it. It's got the date, location, driver, etc, etc. We can do exactly the same thing to scrape all of this data directly into our pandas data frame. Again, copy the URL. Let's get rid of that for now. Let's put the URL in here. And then again, print df because this is going to return a list. Run that. So we can see it has got back two data frames again. The first one, which has got all of the data in it that we were looking at, which was the first table. And the second one is another one which is down the bottom. So if we go to the page again, this is the first table and this was the second table. So to get just the data from the first table, again, we'll index it with a zero and I will do dot head. So we get a snippet of the data and run that and we can see there. It automatically fills in NAN for not a number um, for anything that doesn't have data. So if we look at the, the first one uh, under the one of the columns for mile per hour and kilometer hour has now a number and that will be this column here. So there's found no data. There are a few arguments that we can give it. Um, we could say if we're dealing with dates, we could put in past dates uh, like this, I believe, uh, equal to true. It's Boolean um, and that will pass the dates for us. Uh, and create them in, and turn them into actual uh, date time objects we can use. 
We could also do we could also do skip rows if the first few rows of your table uh, was information that you weren't after. You could put uh, skip uh, rows, I think, or, or one word, uh, and then a number to, of rows to skip. So if I skip uh, first two rows, another thing that you can do is you can actually use uh, match and then pass in some regex to find the table for you. If you're if the if the page that you're looking at has lots of tables. Um, you could just use the match function with regex to find that for you. But the, the the reason the times I've used it recently, I've just indexed and it's been absolutely fine. So I've not bothered with match or any of the other arguments. I've just been able to do it like this. And if we do um, get rid of our print statement and we'll just export this straight to CSV. So df.0.2 CSV and we were on land speed record.csv. And I will remove, do I need to, remove? I'll leave the index in for now and we'll see what that looks like. Run that and we come here. Here's our land speed record CSV file. And we can see we've got all of the data. So hopefully you guys have found this useful. Nice short video for a Wednesday. Um, it's really cool, this cool function. If the website you're looking at is basic data and it's got tables, remember if it has, the, it has to have the actual table tags the table TD, uh, uh, TR and TD for the rows, then this should work. So give it a go. Thanks for watching guys and see you next time. Bye.